Well, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, I think, just got off the phone uh, from the president of the United States, who clearly is rather eager for the stock market to go up and indeed for business as usual to resume in about 17 days. But I think it's uh, a little dangerous to present that as the worst case scenario. Uh, we, we just don't know enough about this virus and the disease it causes yet to be as confident as Paul Tudor Jones just sounded. Let's just imagine that we have the Italian experience uh, in this country, which is not inconceivable at this point. Uh, that would mean that within about two weeks, we would have 400,000 uh, cases and 40,000 dead if you just scale for population. Well, let's imagine that the disease uh, is as contagious as H1N1 and, uh, and yet uh, a great deal more dangerous. Let's apply the South Korean uh, fatality rate. Uh, imagine that 20% of the US population gets COVID-19, uh, but uh, a South Korean rate of mortality uh, strikes, then you're actually looking at 400,000 uh, dead. So I think Paul Tudor Jones is making a mistake in so confidently saying that 40,000 dead is the worst case scenario. I can think of a number of significantly worst case scenarios than that. Uh, the thing is that, that th these things like pandemics uh, or for that matter wars have very fat tails and you can't say with confidence where exactly this thing is going to go until we have much more certainty about its reproduction number, how many people do you infect if you're contagious, and about the fatality rate, uh, not just because the case fatality rate seems to vary enormously from country to country, compare Italy and Germany, but we still have really no idea how many people in the population have caught uh, COVID-19 but evinced no symptoms at all. So we're in a condition of great uncertainty at the moment. And I think it's rather irresponsible to rehash the old line that, oh, it's just the seasonal flu. It's not the seasonal flu. It's happening on top of the flu. And there's no vaccination for COVID-19. And there isn't going to be for at least a year. Neil, what makes you think, I mean, how can we get a handle on, on whether the US is going to follow Italy or, or not? I mean, if you put aside outright the number of cases and focus uh, on the number of deaths, which I guess is, is more comparable because it takes out of the equation how much testing you're doing. Is there any explanation that people have as to why the situation in Italy is so much worse than anywhere else? Well, if we look uh, globally at the most disastrous examples, start with Hubei province in China, the case fatality rate soars when your medical services are overrun with ill people and you simply don't have the capabilities, the intensive care units to cope. That's what causes these big bumps in case fatality rates. Uh, and that was the story in Italy too. Now, we're not as densely populated as the Italians, and I think our social networks are distinctly different. And that's important, as I tried to show in my recent television series, Networld, the social networks as important as the qualities of the virus in determining how things turn out. So I don't think we'll be as bad as Italy. Uh, New York State might be. New York City almost certainly will be. But the US as a whole probably won't be, just because we're more thinly uh, dispersed. Uh, but I think it's important to remember that we're not going to be South Korea. South Korea got a handle on an outbreak, uh, and it did a whole series of things that we just aren't doing. We aren't even doing yet in the United States the kind of strict lockdowns that have now applied in almost every European continental country. Uh, so I think the US is in some ways taking a risk at the moment, and, and particularly uh, if it's going to go back to work around uh, East time, because we still don't really, I think, have enough confidence in what's going to happen here under those kinds of circumstances. We're, we're simply not doing what they did in East Asia to contain it, and we're not even doing what they're currently doing in, in Europe to contain it. So I'd say we were still in the midst of a rather large policy mm -hmm. gamble, and, and it's already in, inflicted a considerable cost on the economy. You know, there is, Wilf, a, a worst-case scenario where the United States does just enough to crater the economy, but not enough to contain the pandemic. And that that's what troubles me most about our current policy stance. Yeah, I mean, especially with the president talking about reopening by Easter. Neil, I, I did want to get to you on your latest sort of societal project that you've been working on, this, this idea of networks and information and messaging across people. How do you think social media 
is playing a role here in spreading news about the pandemic, either making people too scared and too panicked about it, or, or maybe the opposite, not enough, and spreading fake news about what's actually happening? Well, Zero, I can do both, and it has been doing both. It seems to me that if you want to be reassured into a state of complacency, uh, social media has got the memes for you. And if you want to be in a complete panic and imagine that you're in the movie Contagion, well, you'll probably find that on the Internet, too. You know, it's true that technology uh, can uh, disseminate all kinds of, of fake news. But remember, in East Asia, one thing they've been able to do uh, using social media and location data from phones is very quickly contact trace. And this is something we're not doing in the United States. It's not enough for us to ramp up testing, which we're doing. What you really need to do is what they did in South Korea, as well as in China, uh, but also in Taiwan. Remember, it's not just authoritarian regimes that can do this. You use the social graphs that people create with their smartphones through their social media usage so that you can trace the network of people that an infected person has likely been in contact with. And that's why the South Koreans were able to put a lid on their outbreak uh, in a way that Europeans haven't been able to. And I don't think we're going to be able to because we're simply not deploying the technology in that way. Rather, we're letting social media simply be an amplification uh, mechanism for all kinds of very inaccurate assessments of the crisis we face.